Hello everyone and welcome back to Yosemite Valley on a Saturday evening. Yeah, it is uh, nearly a week already that uh, the wonderful uh, new DLC and also the free update dropped and we decided to go, as you guys were voting for it, first of all we go for a giant ant eater. Now I do know that people have been voting a lot more for the jaguar but um, uh, please um, you know, keep in mind that I did already a Jaguar house and did some more stuff with the Jags already. So I didn't want to do the Jaguar overkill here. And uh, also the giant ant eater is the only animal we haven't looked into uh, from the update apart from that little frog. But I mean, you know, it's kind of the little frog anyway. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's definitely very interesting um, to look at. And also um, alongside this one, there will be a capuchin monkey habitat uh, tomorrow or today. I'm not even sure how I scheduled this. Uh, for the Sky Gardens. So in case you haven't seen the Sky Gardens yet, I highly recommend this because the Sky Gardens is my new project. It is going to be a mini series, but um, it's equally cool. Uh, it's a totally different approach than Yosemite. It's uh, a kind of a zoo on top of a hotel. And if you haven't seen that yet, I'm gonna link this to you guys uh, to the top right now. So now let's talk about Yosemite Valley again. And this episode is going to be freaking long I do not apologize for that because you guys seem to like these long episodes anyhow and um, yeah here you go you're gonna get a, a very long episode and a very very crazy sped up time lapse which I'm very sorry for I did already cut a lot out I did already um, try to only put in what is necessary but there is a lot necessary this time because I need to talk about this even though I'm, I'm maybe not talking the whole time lapse, I'll be back with you later on then in the wonderful real time part. However, now you guys gave so much good feedback and I was struggling a lot if I want to go to the other side of this river already or if we stay in the context of the first night house we built. And you can see already from uh, the from the wonderful uh, time lapse over here, we stay in the context of the original night house. No, I don't think uh, this is a mistake and I don't uh, think that this is a problem. I in fact think that you guys were absolutely right in saying that we should maybe go with this one because it does fit the best and you were absolutely right because this is uh, actually it's uh, actually adding some more depth to this uh, night house. It, it makes the whole night house a bit more interesting, it makes it a bit more big, it makes it a bit more um, versatile, and now we also open it up from being a desert night house to be a, you know, general night house, I wanna call it. And uh, we, are not all, we are not even only bringing in the giant ant eater today, no. We are also bringing the master race itself in here as well. It is the bad tape here. It's gonna be in here as well because um we cannot live without the birds tape anymore, okay? We cannot do this. Everyone asked for it and here we go. Um, I also made sure that the, uh, you know, the one we have in here or the two, uh, uh, I've <laughs> I cannot do this. No, they don't have a facility rating of uh, facility what a fatality rating of um, 100. I don't I think one of those has it but uh, just oh, occasionally but anyways <laughs> This is so stupid now uh, This building over here is going to be very interesting because I struggled a lot and this is also the reason why I needed to skip Wednesday's episode I mean you cannot complain there was enough content uh, for you guys out there, but I struggled a lot. I was not really happy with the build I did try several variants of a path layout within this new habitat area. So I've, I've figured that this roundish little thing is the best we can go for because um, the giant anteater and also the bad tapir, they need some space. Uh, so the, the final design of this habitat is just enough for them. So it's really, it's even like a little bit too less. Um, it would still be okay. Um, that the welfare wouldn't go down too much, but it's it's that crazy and yeah We are going to build this habitat over here in a bit I'm going to talk about especially what I planned All right, and uh, since my voice broke again because of the pollen allergy <laughs> just, I'm also recording this pretty late night uh, lately a little bit because my voice t seems to be better at night um, I think it's mainly because I stayed in so long had a fresh shower and stuff and then you know after a while um, all these freaking pollens uh, are going away for a bit so uh, at daytime it's nearly impossible to record anything at the moment because I'm, I'm not even able to talk for like a minute before my voice completely starts to break because of the freaking pollen and stuff uh, but now it's uh, really good Um, this plan over here was to get a a total shift, a total change in um, how this night house feels. So the one side of the night house is definitely 
are focused on being a very much, uh, I think you can even call it distance experience because there is a uh, complete uh, wall between you and the Chinese pangolin and there are also glass windows between you and the desert animals and there is basically a whole lot of a big barrier between you and the artworks. But I wanted to make this area a bit more tangible, a bit more open and a bit more, uh, you know, kind of welcoming you in a new world. This is the idea about this tropical part of it and you know the reason why I changed all of this over here you can see the huge struggle I had with the backstage area I but I, I managed to bring this all together it looks kind of cool in the end I have to say it looks organic it looks almost like it has to be there there are some little bits and pieces here about the pathing that didn't work out the way I wanted it to but we just imagined that there needs to be some pipe work below the ground or whatever something that you know um, is the reason for why the pass is a little bit jaggy here, but I mean, come on, it's... I could have spent hours more to make this perfectly fine, but it doesn't really add to it, you know, it does not really add to anything to it, so I ended up covering it all up with some foliage and stones and rocks and uh, some plaster pieces and here and there. So it's just like really bare bone backstage area, that's what it is, there's not more to it. I just tried to make it um, as as good look as, looking as it can be in a backstage area, you know, there's not much more to it uh, than this, but uh, the main reason why I, you know, put so much effort in fixing that already was because I was losing a little bit my mind about the interior. I don't know how many iterations I made of the interior, and here, here you see me changing again. A million times I changed the barriers, and then I finally got the idea of making some kind of custom fencing here, and the one thing I ended up with is uh, I, I made a, basically a structure that is having a little bit of a yeah a hanging plant i um, i want to call it but it's not really that it's kind of a little canopy uh, that has some kind of uh, nature above it just to make sure that it, it almost looks a bit more jungle-ish and you can see i'm using some of the new pieces from the adventure pack uh, adventure pack i'm just so much into so much back into the wonderful uh, frontier planko times no i'm i'm using uh the I'm using the, uh, how's it called again? Oh, god damn it. Uh, the South American pack pieces, or oh, got the tropical pieces, here we go. This is just like so weird, why am I so stupid? Uh, never mind, you can see I used these things to create somewhat of a, uh, of a custom yeah, barrier, I don't even want to call it. These are custom pillars, but they are here for a reason um, because they kind of set the tone for what is coming up next because I wanted to make this whole thing very jungle-ish in here. You want to you wanna be taken into an immersive experience, okay? So you come in and it should be a change of, of, of mood. It ch should be a change of uh, how the feeling of you is because in Yosemite Valley, you are in a total different mindset, in a total different environment. And the first part of the Nighthouse is still somewhat okay because it features uh, most of the elements you do know from, from Yosemite Valley. It's not that big of a break, even though the habitats themselves are a bit more tropical. However, the whole idea about this is pretty standard. But the further you go into this building, and also time-wise, um, you, you start to forget how it is outside. Just imagine it's like very cold outside you know, in the winter times in Yosemite Valley. So the first part of the house still does work, mainly because there are some windows in between and it doesn't need to be that hot or humid in there because the habitat animals are in their own area and this is why and the artwork doesn't need uh, to have such a huge uh, heat in there so at the end of the day it's not that big of a change but the further you go in the humidity rises and the humidity is also one of the reasons why i needed to put the tropical area in the other building and just connect it with the bridge um, simply because yeah this I think it makes more sense from the realism aspect uh, because you need some kind of area where you can make it a bit more humid and to not really annoy the other animals and not to get in the way with the very dry desert area uh, you're gonna want to have a bit of a distance here that was the main the main idea behind this now you can see I'm starting to put in some of the stones here to cover up this actually very bare bone uh, habitat in the middle where we put the frog in. So in fact we have two animals uh, of the new pack in here today. It's a giant ant eater and it's the green tree frog thing, which I have no idea how this is actually called in the game because it's a freaking long name. Uh, <laughs> but it's just the, the green tree frog, uh, which is, um, I've, I figured that I was a bit 
miseducated, I want to call it. I thought that one was uh, poisonous, but it's not. It's just a very nice looking green tree frog, which uh, is really cool because it's super power uh, cow cool, powerful, colorful. I'm so sorry. My English is so bad today. It's a bit of a weird episode. I'm so sorry for that. It's just like I try to do my best with the recordings at the moment, but it's a really... Uh, a difference uh, to my usual episodes mainly because I need to focus so much on speaking nicely and not doing anything wrong uh, because my voice is always starting to break and stuff but anyways now uh, these speakers over here I don't know why exactly I was able to recolor them I figure that this seems to be changed again with a latest update because I cannot recolor them anymore. I think it's a bug and I did already report that now with the issue tracker. I really hope that this was just a little bug because as I came back to this file, they were white again, which uh, is a, it's, you know, it's not a deal breaker, but it kind of uh, changed a bit of the uh, feel of it because they were hiding away quite nicely in the foliage, but the white one pops out a bit more. But yeah, that's just a minor detail. Now, the rest of the episode will be all about detailing it and making this thing actually look like a night house uh, by using a very nice trick uh, to, to make the sky look nice and I'm gonna talk about this in the real-time part because this is something that you won't be able to explain too well in the time-lapse. Now I really hope that you guys enjoyed the time-lapse so far. I'm gonna head out now for my commentary because again uh, some kind of issues here with my talking I uh, do hope that you guys, if you found me new and uh, this is your first time in, in this episode, you, you made it to this point in the episode, I uh, potentially think you might like it. So consider subscribing if you haven't already, consider being a, a nice part in the feedback area down below in the comments because as always I am really much looking forward to your guys' feedback. Uh, it's always important to move this project forward. And yeah, uh, I cannot say anything more. I will say more though, at the end of this episode, so around the 20 minute mark of this video, the time lapse is over and we jump into the real time part. You can see this finished building and I'm going to explain a bit more what I did and how this uh, needed to be changed and why I changed some things. Uh, because in fact, I changed a few things from the final time lapse result. Uh, which I didn't record, I just figured out some things, how they work out, and yeah, that was something that doesn't belong in a time lapse. and yeah, I really hope you enjoyed it so far, hope to see you in the next one as well, but for now, just stick with me, and we see each other in a few minutes in the real-time part.
So here we are in the real time part and as you can see it's night time because you know we are talking about the night house and it's only looking good at night time. It's looking pretty dull to be, uh, to be honest in daytime but what we're going to do we're going to have a look today at um, the changes of the night house which are pretty massive. You've seen from the, uh, from the time lapse that there are some major changes happening. And I know that a lot of people just uh, skip through to the real-time part, so we are just looking at it as if you haven't seen the time-lapse. So this is the old entrance to the night house, which uh, pretty much stayed the same. So there is not a huge change in here. We do have um, we are basically the same. We have the education boards, we have the desert night. On the left-hand side, we have the art walks in the back here with these kind of starlit um, ceiling. And uh, now the first change is um, able to be seen here. And this is where it used to be a little bit of a corner where you can sit down and behind that is the um, art walk entrance into the habitat however this has changed and we now have this bridge crossing to the other side but before we go so um, over there I'm going to show you what I did here with the art walk habitat the art walks are not in at the moment um, just looking for some better ones <clears throat> no I'm just kidding uh, I just forgot to put them in now, there is now a little bit of a molding down here where they can go through and uh, this is where the entrance is for the staff members. They can reach everything, it's, everything is fine um, and it works pretty much nicely with the bridge and they have a lot of, a lot of uh, new cover and a lot of new space to hide, which is also coming in handy for the artworks, which were potentially a bit stressed. Now, as we move back, uh, we can finally take that bridge and this bridge is in particular interesting because uh, you have this wonderful punch hole in the end of this tunnel um, as the major uh, little weenie so to say that drags you to the other side so this is um, actually pretty cool because you you are somewhat dragged forward oops what was that um, why am I not able to move forward here okay this is a bit weird um, ah, it seems it has some issues with the path building over here uh-huh that's interesting I cannot really move forward. It's a bit finicky here, though. Anyways, we, we made it. So <clears throat> this is then the the night house in nighttime, and I think with uh, the mist on the on the ceiling and the, the lights and stuff, it really gets this feeling across that I wanted to create. Like it feels really jungle-ish and really nice. And let me just quickly turn on the sound so you guys can hear the jungle sounds from the game. Give me a second. So here we go again and now I'm shutting up for a second and I'm going just around the corner so you can hear a little bit of the new sound effects which I think are dope. Okay, so um, I think you, it really came across nicely and I think it's a huge win um, to have these sound effects in here. It really gets across the cool feeling and I also like how this uh, whole thing works at night time. This is really like, it exactly gives um, that what I wanted. It feels very jungle -ish. it feels very lush, it feels... It's still like a night house, it still still gives you the feeling across. We have some photographer's uh, spots over here where there is no window, so people can have nice pictures, but then again, we have some more nice areas with some more privacy for the animals, um, where you have some holes here for the kids, you know, the kids can stand here and see them eating from the termite uh, thingy here, and on the other hand side, if you turn around, you have like uh, all these windows, but they're one-sided glass, um, or, and so that the animals behind have a bit of a privacy area to the to the end here they're not really going there i need to put some kind of uh, little enrichment items there so that they see a reason to go but you can really see the animals are sitting here interacting with each other and just having a good time and overall i'm i'm a big fan of this area so it, it really was a lot of work to get it in exactly this way but i think it really is worth it when you have a look into why are the animals always boxed God, I don't get get it. Like, they are always boxed. Okay, but because the vet is here. Okay, the vet is going to take the animal. Even though I have welfare and everything enabled, um, they still are very happy to get them every now and then. <laughs> uh, but as I said, here are the tapirs as well, running across. We have the other guy in the back here, running around. So yeah, I'm a big fan of this area. It really, it really was a pain to build, but it was also very, very fun to build. You can see wonderful little planter. I think the lighting does wonders on it. It looks fantastic in, yeah, in, in the nighttime. It's just very, very cool. And if we turn to the left, you can see there is 
also the small exhibit in here and you have some of the punch holes. I think it's very cool to just stand here and, and search for the little frog if we can see it. Just want to move around because I don't think we can see it from over here. I don't know where it's sitting right now. Yesterday it was sitting down here on that rock. Oh yeah, it still is sitting here. That's kind of cool. So um, there you have the frog and you can just have a little look inside the... Uh, this, this small habitat. I think it works fine. It's not as cool as the desert has habitat on the other side because it's just one. But I feel with the stones and stuff, it really does do the job. Anyhow, that should be it from my side with the little tour. Um, from the inside, we're now going to zoom out to the daytime and from the outside. All right, to put that in context, this is the old view you guys do know, okay? We are on the plaza that has been the end of season number one. Um, this will be season two in the next episode where we build the bridge and, and go across the river. Um, and pretty much it all seems to be staying the same and nothing really changed. But if we move to the left hand side, you can see the sideline slightly changed. Um, it's okay, I think. I wanted to have it a bit, you know, a bit lower if possible to still have the view of the half dome in the back, but I think it still does work. Um, this building is quite massive, so it had to be hidden away nicely enough. But I think despite this one view over here, nearly nowhere else you can see it because there is some false perspective running here. And when we come from down here, you can see that there is basically only this building you can see. You just come up the stairs and you still have only this building in your side. You, you would never be that tall to be able to look um, over that building. So that's kind of cool. Even though stepping up here and looking to the right hand side, you never really see that building. Uh, also this tree covers it up nicely. Only if you come around here, you have a little glimpse of this building. But since the uh, penguin habitat drags your attention immediately, you won't be able to look over there. So that is kind of the idea. And this is how I planned it out. And as you can see, um, zooming out, you can see how massive this addition is. It's almost the same size in terms of ground level floor um, as the front, but it's way taller and it's way bigger and more chunky uh, because I needed to fit in all the trees and stuff. And yeah, I also tried, if we go to the other side, I tried to hide it away as nicely as possible from this side. I'm not entirely sure if I, uh, if I leave it that way because it is quite massive and it kind of destroys the natural view of the right hand side. If you go from over here and to the left hand side, you have this very natural line. So maybe we have to put in a lot more trees here, maybe some of the more uh, chunky trees and a bit more uh, a bit more lush so that we can hide this away even more. But I think with the roofing, it kind of works cool because it is this kind of a, a turquoise-ish color that works well in here. So. Yeah, I'm quite happy with how that turned out. And if we, um, yeah, if we just look from the backside, we have some backstage access over here connected with this little pathway going through here. Like this is only cosmetic, but I just wanted to have it and it's kind of connected to the penguin backstage ha habitat area. So I think that's kind of cool and it uh, does fulfill the job. We also have another access door here. So yeah, this, this backstage area really is um, pretty ugly, but that's what it is. It's a backstage area. You can go through here through this little tunnel, you can see it's all fine. The people are not getting chopped heads, which is uh, kind of good. And then you go up here again, and this is the other backstage area, which I haven't done yet. So we might want to uh, put some more buildings here to make sure that the, uh, the keepers have some more buildings and stuff. But yeah, I think overall it really makes sense and really turns out to be very interesting to look at. Uh, also from above, it gets some realism across. I made some different roof tilings on top here, so make it a bit more interesting to look at. But I think in total, this area turned out to be very cool. I never expected that area to be so dense, honestly. I really thought about making smaller habitats, like more natural habitats, but I think it's a cool addition to the park because we have so many big natural habitats as of the cheetah and we have the tiger, we have the lions and we have the bisons, we have the pronghorn. So we have a lot of natural bigger habitats. So I think it's a welcome addition to have this wonderful night house now as a finished thing over here. And to be honest, this is now the fully finished first half of the zoo, except the uh, um, not finished um, kind of uh, parking lot management system. <laughs> we still need to do that. But yeah, the next step is actually to bring this bridge to life. And I want to relocate this a little bit so that it faces a tad bit more to this side over here. I was taking the most narrow part of it, but maybe I have to change it. And again, we have to make sure that this is not only a normal bridge, but also uh, a kind of maintenance bridge. So I have an idea how to solve that issue, but the problem is we do not really have a maintenance access here. The only cool thing we have is that we have this tunnel 
on that side and we have this bridge here so my plan is to connect this tunnel or it's not a tunnel it's like a sunken backstage area which is still not really tackled nicely enough so that this will get um, a connector over here and then we kind of have a little bit of a yeah, it's almost like a it's almost like a little uh, traversable area for them it's almost like uh, this kind of train train passing system where you just go to this side and then you can uh, have a little bit of an access to here to the bridge so that we can still hide this from the guests nicely but it's not completely hidden so that this kind of becomes a little bit of a connection for the backstage and then you can go to this side and we have um, yeah the, the whole next big Backstage center goes here um, and then this whole area might be the rainforest area, which I'm not really sure how it looks um, I do have an idea though that I want to have a geodesic dome ish build on this side so that this plaza over here gets this view across to this dome um, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. Maybe I'm working with a half dome again uh, But I think it would be a kind of cool continuation of the idea of the zoo and giving nice sidelines from here to here So that the next the next step is actually finishing off basically this square over here and then yeah So we're gonna look at that soon, uh, but for now that's enough for today's little recording And I hope you enjoyed today's episode make sure as always to give feedback share it if you like it and and uh, Yeah, give a thumbs up as well uh, as always, you know the drill and I hope you all stay Stay safe and have a good time. Have a good weekend. Goodbye, guys.